Hi children and welcome to Friday's lesson um, and it's all about, it's a reading lesson. Um, again, we're going to look at a non-fiction text this week and it's called Eureka uh, and that gives you a bit of a clue as to what the text might be about. Um, and today's I can is to demonstrate your understanding of a non-fiction text. And um, we're actually going to focus on two vipers later on. One will be retrieval and one will be inference. Okay, and I'll come on to that in a minute. Right, before we start, um, what I'd like you to do is... Um, have a look at some of the words before we start reading the text. Uh, there's some key vocabulary you need to understand what the meaning is of. Uh, so have a look at the sentences, see if you can figure out what the vocabulary means, and I'll go through what it means in a second ahead of reading the extract. So we've got uh, number one, plans are drawn up and a prototype is built. What might prototype mean? A patent is applied for. I wonder if any of you know what a patent is. The invention is mass produced. What do we think mass produced means? And we would live very different lives if it were not for the dedication of the inventors. What do you think dedication means? Uh, and obviously those those sentences there give you a bit of a clue as well. There's a picture at the start as to what this non-fiction text is all about. Right, pause the video and see if you can have a think as to what you think those four words mean. Okay, so what those words mean will help you when you're if you're understanding when you read the text, um, is a uh, plan to draw up and a prototype is built. What's a prototype? Uh, a prototype is the first example of a new invention or idea uh, used as a test version. So it, when it's to do with inventions, uh, the prototype is when you cr create the first one for the very first time that you test it on. Um, okay. A patent. What's a patent? A patent is actually a legal document that means that people cannot steal or copy your idea for an invention. So if you come up with an idea uh, for, for a new invention, if you get it patented, uh, people can't steal that idea. All right. The invention is mass produced. What does mass produced mean? Mass produced means lots and lots and lots of them are made uh, in the idea that they'll be sold across the world. So when mass production is, is mass is to do lots, uh, producing lots and lots of the inventions. Um, to sell, basically. And then finally, we would live very different lives if it were not for the dedication of the inventors. Well, dedication, I think you'll have got that one. Dedication is just where you try really hard at something, uh, you never give up, you persevere, and you're, you're really devoted to your idea. Okay, so that gives you lots of clues to what the text is about. And now what I'm going to do is read the text. Uh, remember, it is on Teams for you to have a look at yourself. Um, but I'll read it through for you. Okay, you can follow along with me like we were doing a lesson. So it says, Eureka, have you ever looked around you at all the things you have in your house and wondered how they got there? Who invented them? Why were they invented? Inventors are usually ordinary people like you and me who discover something that needs changing or improving. Sometimes people don't even know that they are inventors until they discover a problem they want to solve. If nobody else is willing to sort out their problem, then they do it themselves. And lo and behold, a new invention appears. Born inventors. Sometimes people are so curious that they can't help themselves. For example, when Sir Isaac Newton discovered that light was made up of all the colours of the rainbow, he spent months investigating his theory and setting up experiments that separated the light into its different colours. He wouldn't stop until his work was done. And there's a picture of Sir Isaac Newton on the side there. Um, accidental inventors. Other inventors came across their ideas purely by accident. The little glass marbles in the middle of the roads that reflect the light from cars' headlights and help drivers to follow the road in the night are called cat's eyes. The inventor got his idea when driving at night and he noticed that his car headlights were reflecting in the eyes of a cat sitting by the side of the road. And so another life-changing invention was born. Cat's eyes, the inspiration there. You can see the picture of the cat's eyes. Uh, and we've got a little diagram, so it says, where to begin? It takes a while for an idea to develop into a full-blown product, being sold in the shops. Follow the arrows below to track an invention from idea to shop floor. So it starts with an idea that is unusual and original. Um, and then it goes to the plans are drawn up and a prototype, which is that test project, a prototype is built. A patent is applied for. Uh, the patent being that legal document so that the idea can't be stolen. Uh, the inventor then tries to find an investor investors who will put money into it um, and then the invention is mass produced and made available to buy in the shops so that's how it goes from start to beginning and um, from start to end sorry 
Right. Believing in what you have invented. It's not easy to be a successful inventor, but everything you see around you every day, from televisions to mobile phones, were invented by someone. Every invention also went through the same process of idea to product. The hardest part of the invention process is believing in what you are making. When Marconi invented the first radio in 1896 and Farnsworth invented the first television in 1927, people laughed and said they would never be popular. The Wright brothers believed they could invent a machine that, met, that would let men fly. Almost everyone said they must be mad, but they knew they could build an aeroplane. In 1902, they held their first successful flight, where spectators gasped and burst into an enormous round of applause. The Wright brothers believed in their invention, and they proved that they were right. Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone in 1887. He knew that the sound could travel through wires and after many experiments and prototypes, the world's first telephone appeared. This idea was mocked by Bell's friends, but thanks to his hard work, it is now one of the most popular ways of communicating in the world. What would we do without them? Imagine a world without telephones, televisions, radios and aeroplanes. It's difficult because these inventions are so important in our 21st century lives. We would live very different lives if it were not for the dedication of the inventors and the belief that they had in their inventions. We owe a lot to inventors, but it's easy to forget about them when you're sitting in front of your widescreen television or talking to your friend on the phone. So next time you get on a plane, switch on a washing machine, talk on your mobile or switch on your computer, think about the person whose idea it was and the process they went through so you could use it. Maybe they'll encourage you to invent something yourself. Good luck! And we've got a glossary at the end. Investor, someone who gives money to help make the invention, expecting more money back when the invention sells. Patent, as we discussed earlier. A legal document that stops other people from copying the idea. And a prototype, the first example of a new invention made to test the design. So that's the reading extract. And as you can see, it's all about inventors um, and inventing all the things we have in the modern world. OK, right. We'll do our quick quiz. I'm going to load it up on the screen in a second. Um, remember, this is very quick fire. Remember what has been in the text. You have to look back at the text uh, and you can write your answers down and then we'll go through the answers afterwards. So quick quiz, full screen. Uh, first question, what is the name of the scientist who discovered the light made up all the colours of a rainbow? One point for that. What does an invention start with? One point for that. What did Farnsworth invent? One point for that one. In what year was the first radio invented? One point for that one. And what did Alexander Graham Bell invent? One point for that one. And then finally, which three words are defined in the glossary? Right, pause the video now, give yourselves maybe a couple of minutes and see if you can complete the quick quiz. Okay, so hopefully you've had a go at that. The answers were, guys, the first one, uh, it was Sir Isaac Newton who discovered that light made up all the colours of the rainbow. Uh, I wonder if you put your capital letters on S, I and N there. Okay, just check him. Uh, next one, what's an invention start with? Well, it starts with an idea. Uh, what did Farnsworth invent? Farnsworth invented the television. In what year was the first radio invented? Uh, I put Marconi and, and it's the wrong answer. Oh my gosh, I've just noticed that. I'm going to change it. In what year was the radio invented? It was Marconi that invented the radio, but it was in 1896. Whoops, a daisy, Mr. Mann's got that one wrong. I apologize. Uh, the answer is 1896. <coughs> That's a classic example of not reading the question carefully, even though I wrote the question. There you go. Anyway, what year was the Virtual Radio invented? It was 1896 uh, is the answer. There you go. I bet you've had a little laugh at me for that one. Um, Number five, what did Alexander Graham Bell invent? He invented the telephone. And then finally, which word, three words are defined in the glossary? Investor, patent and prototype were the three words. There are three, four, five, six, seven, eight points available. I wonder who got eight out of eight. Um, and I can't believe it. I'm very embarrassed. I'd have got seven out of eight today because even though I made the quiz, I still actually put the wrong answer. There you go. There's irony in that one. Right. Well done, guys. I hope you enjoyed the quick quiz. Scan me through back through the text. Right. Today, we're going to concentrate on two different vipers for our questions. OK. And the first one 
is going to be to do with retrieval. So when we come to our questions in a minute, uh, the questions that we do with the retrieval, the first set of questions. Retrieval is really similar to the quick quiz you've just done. Because right, basically, retrieval questions just ask you to pick out the information from the text. Um, so here's an example question for you uh, that you can have a go at now. So this first question, it says, the introduction to the booklet tells us that inventors are often normal people, that inventors go to a special inventor school, that only five people invented everything, that there are no such things as inventors. And it's quite a straightforward question. If you look back at the text, look at the start, uh, it will tell you the answer and you can retrieve it directly from the text. So what I'd like you to do is pause the video, find what you think is the answer, retrieve the answer, uh, and then I'll, I'll go through what the answer is as soon as you've done that. OK, so hopefully you've had a go at that first question. If you look back at the text, it says at the start of the text, inventors are usually ordinary people like you and me. Uh, so the answer to this question would be the introduction to the booklet tells us that inventors are often normal people. This one here. OK, so that's a retrieval question. You just look back at the text, scan through for uh, where you think the answer might be. Uh, and obviously the answer to this one is going to be at the start because it says the introduction uh, and look for the correct answer like this. OK, um, another set of questions we're going to look at today are what we call inference questions. Um, now, inference is similar. Uh, in terms of that you'll look back at the text to find the answers. However, you have to use your imagination and do a little bit of detective work to work out what's going on. Because whereas the last one tells us directly by looking in the text and you can just retrieve the information you need, this one you need to use the clue from the information um, and read through it, through, through the text, and then you should be able to work out the answer a little bit like a de detective somewhat solving an investigation. So it says, at the end, the booklet tells us two. So obviously there's a clue there straight away. Let's look at the end. Um, it tells us to what? Does it tell us to take inventors for granted? Be afraid of inventors? Look for inventors at school? Or be thankful for inventors? So what I like to do is pause the video and have a go at that question. OK, in this one, and when you look at the extract at the end here, it talks all about how much we owe to inventors. Um, and how, how lucky we are to have inventors in our lives. So where, what I think for this one is, I think the answer must be to be thankful for inventors. That's what it's trying to get us to do, is to think about them, thank them, and be grateful for them. Okay, so for that one, the answer would have been D. And I worked that out by looking back at the text, reading the information, and then looking for what seemed like the most sensible answer based on the clues I was given. Today's the key to success, okay? Read the questions carefully. Think about what he's asking you. I've already tripped up earlier on the quick quiz, didn't I, where I didn't read the question carefully and then I wrote down the wrong answer on the slides. OK, so there's a classic example of, yes, we read the text carefully. We also must read the question carefully. Look back at the text and find the right section and reread it. So in both those questions, it gave me clues. One said to look at the introduction. One said to look at the end. Find the answer and write it out in your book, obviously. Uh, read the question again and reread your answer again and check that it makes sense. So once you've done your answer, read that against the question. Have you answered it correctly? Capital letters, full stops, correct spellings, same presentation as in school. The questions that you've got are here. Um, so we've got um, the first page is all the retrieval type questions. It says I can retrieve information. So here you, you go through the questions and a bit like that first practice question, the answers will be, all be able to be retrieved from text directly. If you scan back to um, scan through the information uh, for this first example, use the information from the text to match the inventor to what they invented. I look for the inventor Marconi, find the answer. OK, there are some little scaffolds in there for you to give you some sentence starters. So for this one, how were the cat size invented? Well, there's your sentence starter you can use to write your answer uh, and so on. There are eight retrieval questions for you to have a go at. Um, and there are there are answers to go with this There's another uh, page on teams with the answers and you can mark your work against that. Then the second set of questions are your inference questions and this time similar to before look back at the text you might just have to use the clues from the passage to put what you think is the most sensible and justified answer. Um, so I'll, I'll leave you to have a go at those ones. Again I've given answers for those that you can check your word again your work against. 
And um, for things like this one at the bottom, how do you think inventors feel when their ideas are laughed at? Um, there's a sentence starter you can use as your scaffold. And then for these two questions at the end, how do you think? Well, they might be different emotions. You just need to justify uh, whatever emotion you choose. OK, um, as a stretch, uh, as a thing you can do beyond this, uh, if you're an inventor, what would you try and invent? Can you create a detailed design for a new invention, explain how it works, and what it does? So as an extra thing, if you'd like to do it today as a bit of a stretch, uh, maybe get a piece of paper and come up with a new gadget or a new imaginary invention uh, of some sort, some sort of a wicked design or something, and, and label it all up and explain how it works and what it does. Uh, there's a little bit of creativity to, to, for you to do with this uh, topic of inventions. Um, in terms of this work today, we would like this work submitted. So um, obviously the work that you do in terms of answering the questions, if you could put those in the share your work folder or send, us, send them to us on the chat or via email, uh, we would like to look at what you've done for today's lesson. OK, I hope that all makes sense uh, and I hope that you um, feel confident answering those questions. Remember, if you don't get an answer right when you look at the answer sheet, do not worry, it doesn't matter. Uh, we just learn from it, don't we? Uh, and we can then have a look at it and see, see what we should have put. Um, and it's all learning by doing, really. Um, and I hope some of you have, have a bit of fun having a go at the stretch as well. All right, guys, thanks a lot. See you later. Bye.